D&D Beyond now fits in the palm of your hand with the free D&D Beyond app. It's the perfect tool set for beginners, regular players, and seasoned dungeon masters. Play faster with the guided character creator and access your character sheets, spells, and abilities wherever you go. All of your adventures and source books are at your fingertips, even when you're offline. Easily find and access the rules you need when you need them. With more features to come, download the free D&D Beyond app today. To D&D Beyond, I am Amy Dallin, and as you all know, we are in the throes of New Book Week. We have, at last, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft here for us to use and play and enjoy and finally, finally talk about. And there's nobody better that we could possibly be talking to about it than please welcome Wes Schneider, the lead on the entire project. Welcome to the show. Ooh, thanks for having me. So I have a thousand questions. Uh, the book is out. You can get cool. it right now in D&D Beyond or your local store, anywhere you want to get books. Uh, and you should, I'm just saying that for me because the book is really, really good. And it's packed to the gills with inspiration, new uh, player options, new world options, a bunch of really fantastically helpful, practical advice for running and implementing games that I know I have been thrilled to see. Uh, so we want to dive in immediately on a couple of those details, please. Uh, one thing that really yeah. jumped out to us about the book, it's you could almost miss it, I think, if you're surfing through some of the gameplay sections. Talk to us a little bit, if you would, about curses and how curses work uh, in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. So curses are one of the elements of the book that are really leaning into some of the some of the classic gothic horror tropes like so many um old gothic stories like have that like wronged character that person who like the the main character does some slight against them and with their dying breath i curse you to never be happy again i curse you only to only to cry in the sunlight like think like just the most elaborate um structures the the, the well, i mean these these curses um <laughs> that we see again and again throughout fiction i mean stephen king's thinner is sort of the the classic version of that as well um but if you if you take that and you're like yeah the snow curse there you go done that's not actually super satisfying. So the curses section in Van Richten's guide is largely a framework for if you're a DM or if you're a character, how do you, in these super dramatic moments, do a, lay a curse, whether on an enemy, um, if you're a PC, or if you're uh, the DM, how do you use a curse to be a driving factor in in your stories and something that your your players might be dealing with that's more than just a a handful of stat penalties and it's not something that's so easy to just clear away as if oh yes that was an inconvenient day yesterday i'll just apply the following yes. yep like hey, if thinner was resolved by like okay remove curse let's get on with our lives I mean, that that loses so much of the exciting story potential. I mean, you also see it in like classic tales about mummies and whatnot. Like, oh, you you went across the seal and now you have to deal with like we're seeing right here, like the children of octopods like, who are <laughs> going to be pursuing you endlessly. Um, what do you do to stop that? That isn't a low level spell. So, uh. What would be your tips for DMs trying to implement the curse material? Oh, um, read, read everything, watch everything. Like so much of this book is how do you do that thing from your favorite movie? How do you do that thing from your favorite fiction, um, from your favorite horror story or game or whatever it is? Um, anything that you've seen that affected you, that was a thing that creeped you out and you want to um, revisit that upon your players, um, 
or with your players, depending on who's cursing whom, um, <laughs> using those things that you've seen as frameworks and giving them your own D&D twist or just like your own, hey, I've got a wild idea for something, but I want it to sort of be like Beauty and the Beast or I want it to be like Thinner or whatever have you. Um, steal liberally um, and uh, give it your own spin, make it yours. I love that. Another way to add that spin into games, uh, and I love uh, the next mechanic we're going to talk about today, I was very fascinated by it from that same chapter. Would you talk to us a little bit about fear and stress yeah. as mechanical tools yes. and storytelling inspirations in Ben Richtens? So Ravenloft for forever, um, not in the adventure so much, but but definitely in, in the campaign setting has always come with all right, and here's how you work with fear, and here is horror as an affliction, and here's madness, and so on and so forth. So particularly in second edition, whenever you were playing a Ravenloft game, part of it was, ooh, we're playing in the campaign setting that comes with a bunch of extra penalties. Ooh, boy. Um, <laughs> And that's, that is definitely one direction that you can do it. And there's, you know, a lot of love for those systems and there's a lot of efficacy there. Um, fear has always been a part of Ravenloft. It's something that we want uh, the, the characters at the table to, to feel. And it's something that um, we want to make sure that there's a framework that parties can get behind for what does being afraid mean at our game table. And one of the best ways that we could come up with to, to make that work, to make that an interesting thing, is to very early on talk to players up front about this is a horror game. We, if you're in for horror, okay, this is the game for you. If you're not, that's fine. Like maybe take a step back, have those, con those preliminary conversations but also just telling them up front that part of a horror game is being afraid. Lean into it. That can be a fun thing. So one of the big aspects of the uh, fear and stress mechanics is the baseline of, hey, players, here's why you would want to be afraid. What are you afraid of? Detail that, put that on your character sheet, and then get rewarded for when you get in, into encounters where you can express that um, in the form of getting inspiration or or other benefits. So that was sort of the root of it um, and the launching point for what followed. And the, on the opposite note, in some ways, can you talk to us about stress? What is stress yes. and how do you recommend people start using that at their tables? So, uh, despite everything that I just said about wanting to get players to, to buy into uh, the fear of the experiences, there are situations where just the horror situation just becomes oppressive. It's inescapable. There's no respite from it. It's hitting players or it's hitting characters again and again and again. Um, what toll does that take? Uh, so stress is the mechanic by which like, all right, you've not been able to get a break. Everything's been horrible forever. What's the toll? And then how does it grow over time? So stress is a, a simple mechanic where it's just you start building up these penalties and they're just the weight of everything horrible weighing on you. And for them to gradually recede, for you to gradually get rid of them, you're either going to have to go to magical situations or you're just going to have to finally find that opportunity to get some, some sort of respite. Um, and I think that there's definitely stories where, you know, you'll probably be playing with just fear most of the time, but definitely for some of the domains, which are just completely, um, you know, are just anathema to heroes, like Blutzberg comes to mind, where it's just like, mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, that's the perfect place for these stress systems. I do want to talk a little bit, please, about 
Dark Lords. The actual, a lot of space in this book is given to the incredible domains of dread and their terrifying and trapped Dark Lords. And one thing that we love about it is the way that the guide constructs things so that defeating a Dark Lord is not usually a simple matter of taking them out in a fight. Uh, it's usually more complicated than that. And I think that's so incredibly cool. But can you give any advice to folks who are working with Dark Lords or making their own on how to construct those kinds of challenges, which are as complicated as they ought to be for something of that, that as big as taking out a Dark Lord? Yeah. So one of the biggest elements of, of Ravenloft just writ large is that it is a whole setting that's about characters like all of the dark lords are at the core of each one of these domains um St like strahd isn't just a person strahd is his whole setting and that's the same for every one of the dark lords um and one of the things that we didn't want to do was be like "Ooh, this setting that you really like you should probably be 14th level for it you should probably be 18th level for it. You should probably be 22nd level for it. You'll never be strong <laughs> enough for this level. You might love it, but just don't go. Um, <laughs> we really wanted to put the Dark Lord center stage and like, we didn't want to treat them just like creepy artifacts to be kept up on the shelf. Like get them down, play with them. If you want to play Curse of Strahd, I mean, you can definitely play Curse of Strahd at first level, but if you wanted to have Strahd showing up for your first level characters, do that. Great, fantastic. He's going to be an overwhelming threat, but he's going to be an overwhelming threat whether you're first, fifth, 15th, 20th level, whatever have you. These should be more than just collections of numbers. Um, and honestly, if you're going in and you're being like, oh, uh, we solve Curse of Strahd by punching the vampire the most. I mean, that's a solution. It's but I think that's missing <laughs> out of them. Exactly. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to, to do with every one of the Dark Lords is these are characters, but they're also problems. They are the living, tormented, constantly shifting and readjusting and reacting to the players. Um, issue du jour for every for every domain. Um, so that's one of the elements that I love the most about them is that you can go and you can punch Strahd, you can punch Victor Mordenheim, you can punch all of these characters, but at the end of the day, they're going to come back and they are just going to like you less, which is probably going to lead to a whole host of other problems until you get at the root story that drives each one of them and see what you can do to either undermine that or um, uh, throw them for such a loop that you can escape from their, from their domain. <laughs> So it opens up essentially two paths for resolution. One sort of being like change their power within the domain or affect something about that in a way other than straight up defeat. And one is just the straight up get out of here with your lives if you can. Yes. I mean, one of the most fun aspects to, to my mind about Ravenloft is that it doesn't make sense, that every domain is a nightmare. The dark powers are these cosmic horror entities that are constantly making adjustments that nobody will ever understand. And every domain is, to an extent, a haunted house. It's, you're here, there's something terrible, and the door's locked and we can't get out. Um, <laughs> And every one of the domains has that general vibe to it. Um, so once you're locked in with this character, what do you do to undermine them? What do you do to, um, what, what do you do that um, plays into their plot, either satisfying it or disrupting it that will finally allow you to, to get out of that house? Hey.